you can make a, a, a virtual human, basically there's nothing you cannot do. And you don't even need to control this digital avatar. Uh, we, we can make you speak whatever we want. Let us scan you for three hours, right? And your, your virtual performance is going to be transformed into that, uh, that three hours are going to transform into data. And that machine learning process is allowing us to actually monetize whatever your, your, your facial movement, how your, your, how your uh, blood flows in, in your face, how your muscle moves. And then that we can do a simulation of how you're going to perform. By using this simulation, a machine learning simulation, that we can actually predict uh, uh, you know, the human performance. And this is virtual human. The moment we capture your face, and then we can transfer your face to anything that we want. As I signed an NDA, I, I couldn't tell which number, but it is. they are the world-class, most iconic uh, business person uh, in Greater China, who actually came to DD last year uh, to, to, uh, to full-scale scan his face. What he wants is very simple. He believes that uh, even though the technology is not there yet today, but he believes that with the proper AI machine learning and big data, with his virtual likeness, his, his, his virtual data, that he can be able to speak to his family forever, his son, his grandchildren, his grandchildren's grandchildren. Basically, you live forever. That, uh, uh, that there was an accident that, that my, my mom passed away uh, in 2012. I have never ever stopped thinking about to use the same technology that we, which owned by my company today to recreate my, my mom, right? But also, I think it's exactly the same thing that uh, when I watched uh, the Black Mirror. What if this actually happens? How do you face it? The first time when I saw uh, uh, Teresa Tan's family, uh, in LA, they can visit us to check out the, um, the, the virtual Teresa team. The first thing that I saw, their reaction is they cry. And even one of, his, one of her family members is actually a general uh, in Taiwan, a retired general in the army service. Even a tough guy like him, there's tears in his eyes and he said that he just doesn't know how to react. So. This is a very scary technology. I have been asking so many questions internally, not even externally, about how do we prevent this technology in the right hand. There will be one day, mark my word, there will be one day, there will be one day, there will be one day you watch that someone is going to use this technology, not, not necessarily from my company, I hope not. But there will be one day it will happen that people will start questioning, people will start to question about whether every single video footage is real or not. Not today, but it will be one day everybody will question about it. And how you prevent it, I don't know. You, you, we, we definitely need to, to think about to create a system, a software or police system, you know, to prevent this happening. But I can guarantee you, even though we are trying so hard, but it will happen one day. I believe in the future that um, in the next five years that people actually will live in a world like pretty much like Ready Player One. Um, that there will be a reality world like, like, like this, a reality world, and it's going to be a virtual world. And I believe that one day 
the boundary, the line in between the virtual world and the reality world will be gone. Right? The virtual and reality is actually coexist. And if that happens in the next five years, and I, I can ensure you one thing, the digital avatar, the virtual human, is going to be the most important thing because this is how, this is how you present yourself. Not us anymore. It's pretty much like the Ready Player One. You have a very iconic uh, digital avatar who's going to speak on behalf of you, who's going to act on behalf of you, and people are going to recognize this guy more than us.